The party is in full swing in Charlotte at the Belk Bowl. Big East co-champion Cincinnati stands in the way of Duke's first bowl win in over half a century. Moments ago, Janine Edwards was in the Blue Devil locker room. There's something pretty special happening right now here in this locker room. These players are experiencing something they have never done before. They're getting ready to take the field for a postseason game. They tell me they are hyped and they know what's at stake today. David Cutcliffe has him fired up and here come the Blue Devils. Welcome to the 2012 Belt Bowl. A bowl win for Duke would be monumental, but it won't come easy against the Cincinnati team looking for yet another 10 win season. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Ed Cunningham. It's great to have you with us. This is such a special moment for the Duke Blue Devils. When they're in a bowl game, you often hear which one of these teams really wants to be here. Well, tonight, the answer is both of them, even though it's for different reasons. And for Duke, it's obvious. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go out and play for Duke right now after listening to Coach Cutcliffe. It's obvious why this is a big deal for Duke. A little more complicated, though, for Cincinnati. Remember, they lost their head coach when Butch Jones left to go to Tennessee. But Steve Stripling, who will go to Tennessee after this game, stayed behind as the interim head coach. And he challenged his team by saying, be elite. They can win, as you mentioned, their 10th game. The other teams that have won 10 games in the last five years, like Cincinnati, will have done five of the last six, Oklahoma, Oregon, Alabama, and Virginia Tech. That's pretty elite. And Cincinnati, to a man, they're ready for this game. Yeah, it's pretty good company. Duke's formula for success has been rather simple this year. Throw it, throw it, get it back, and throw it again. And they've been pretty good at it. Well, let's not forget Cutcliffe's background, right? He coached Peyton Manning and Eli Manning in college. And he's developed a pretty good quarterback here at Duke and Sean Renfrey, the senior from Arizona who had been recruited by Cutcliffe when he was an assistant for the second time at Tennessee, decided to come across country and has had a, a tremendous career. And a lot of that is because Cutcliffe has gone out and got some pretty good receivers as well. A guy who now is the ACC's all-time leading receiver, Connor Vernon, comes into his last game at Duke trying to impress NFL scouts, and that doesn't happen very ha often for Duke. Cincinnati won a share of the Big East title because of a late-season gamble and a big one. They changed quarterbacks. Much of the go was throwing the ball to the other team a little too much, and they went with Brendan Kay in the second half against Syracuse. He brought the team back, and down the stretch, he led them to three of four. Uh, three of the last four ball games were wins, so that they got in as a co-Big East champion. K, a good runner, not quite as good as Lego, but he throws a good deep ball, and that will be key against Duke, who's been a little suspect in their secondary in the back half of the season. That's Steve Stripling, the interim head coach. This will be his final appearance on the Cincinnati sideline. He'll be off to join Butch Jones at Tennessee. Let's check in with Janine Edwards on the sideline. Well, Mike, one of the challenges for Cincinnati has been preparing for this bowl with only half a coaching staff. Instead of the normal 10 coaches, they're operating with only five. And one of the things they've had to deal with for this game is that several of the guys have to be up in the box. So they have three coaches and one grad assistant on the field for tonight's game. They've gone through dry runs with communications, but they are without one offensive and one defensive signaler. So they've recruited students. They've even recruited the office secretary's husband to help with play charting. So it's been sort of a piece together coaching staff tonight for Cincinnati and TJ Weist who's up in the box with the wide receivers and he is the offensive coordinator tonight. He told me communication and subbing will be the two biggest things that they're going to have to refine tonight guys. Pat O'Donnell will kick it away. Almost half of his kicks have been touchbacks. The return out across the 20 for Crowder. The outstanding wide receiver and Duke will start from there. Sean Renfrey completing two thirds of his passes. He's nearing the 3,000 yard mark, 18 touchdowns, and only eight interceptions. He's won a slew of awards, including the Pop Warner Award. A Pop Warner alumnus who's been outstanding on the field 
in the classroom and in his community. Jawan Thompson will start at running back. Duke does not run the ball very much. And Renfrey to throw on first down. Pump and go. Caught by Thompson, runs the wheel route out of the backfield at the 42-yard line. A gain of 21 on the first play at Cunningham. Nice job by Renfrey. He, great protection by this offensive line. And Cincinnati, in their secondary, this has been a solid defense. But their problem has been, for Cincinnati, if they have not gotten the pass rush, you can throw some balls on them. They're 72nd in the country in pass defense, so fits what Duke likes to do on offense. A new tailback, Sneed, number nine. Duke will rotate three guys. Sneed will carry. Duke, as far as the running game, only 104th in the country, and Cincinnati is 27th stopping the run. So it's weakness against strength in the Cincinnati defense. As far as scoring, they're only they're 12th in the country. They've done a sensational job where it matters most, and that's on the scoreboard. And you look at what they lost from last year. Two defensive linemen went to the NFL. Steve Stripling, who's acting as a defensive coordinator, they did a fantastic job with the D-line this season. Sneed trying to get to the outside across midfield into Cincinnati territory to the 44 and a first down. The tackle finally made by Cameron Beard, one of the defensive linemen who chased the play down. But if Duke gets anything out of the run game, it's a bonus. One of the things when you watch Duke on offense and you start to realize this is not the Duke of three or four years ago, is their offensive lines getting better every time you watch them. They're, they're athletic. They stay on blocks. They may not push guys off the ball. They're not as physical as some teams, but this is a good group up front. Big early down here, third and two. They may be in four-down territory. They won't need it as the leading receiver all time in ACC history. Connor Vernon picks up his first catch on a post, and it's a gain of 20. And this is exactly what Sean Renfrey said, the types of throws that they had to hit. When they're open underneath, you have to hit the, what he called the easy throws against Cincinnati. That time, Devin Drain, the cornerback, played so far off. All they had to do, Duke, was sit Vernon inside, and that was an easy throw and catch. But Renfrew said, those are the key ones. You've got to convert those. Nice throw. 274 catches all time. Two backs in the backfield. Cincinnati shows blitz. Sneed, another big hole. Sneed inside the five. Well, and another fantastic block by the right guard, Lakin Tomlinson. He, he's a guy that's the most physical player up front for Duke, and that time he pushed Beard all the way across the play and opened up a huge hole. This Duke offensive line, it, it's a pretty impressive group. And I know it takes a lot to impress you up front, and you've been impressed ever since you started reading about it. Quarterback keeper, Renfrey, touchdown. How's that for an opening drop? I think they may have caught Cincinnati a little off guard with that inside run. I do, too. Ross Martin described by David Cutcliffe is the most talented kicker he has ever had is on for the point after and it was tipped can they run it in yes holy cow well the ball was blocked behind the line of scrimmage so therefore, the offensive team can pick it up and score. So you mentioned that this young man is the most talented kicker he's ever had. He also might be the smartest. The celebration may be over for Duke as far as that uh, extra point is concerned. It looks like it's going to be overturned by instant replay, and here's why, Ed. Well, watch the knee right at the end here by Martin. Good hustle there to finish the play. And the ball had not crossed the goal line. Now, I, they're saying indisputable video evidence. I think you can infer the ball didn't cross the line. I'm not so convinced from either of these two replays you can say that it did not. I don't think it did, but I'm not so sure that this should have been overturned. A really good 
tip of the cap for Cincinnati for not finishing that play. But remember, when a ball is when the ball never crosses the line of scrimmage in a kick situation and goes backwards, the offense can advance it. So Chenault had very good heads up defense for Cincinnati to finish off that play. Adam Dempsey gets credit for the block, so it's six nothing Blue Devils. And Ralph David Abernathy the fourth takes the kick in the end zone and they will start from the 25 yard line. This is Brendan Kay who has started the last four ball games, took over for Munchie Lego and has really stabilized the offense. He may not make the spectacular plays that Lego made but he will not make the big mistakes that Lego made and that's why Butch Jones made the decision after the eighth game. That's really it rolling the dice. And for Tommy Tuberville, the coach who was hired away from Texas Tech to take over for Butch Jones, good news that Kay, a senior, was granted a sixth year of eligibility. So this is actually not his last game as a Bearcat. Empty backfield, and Kay wants to throw on first down. Abernathy will pick up about three. Ross Cockrell made the tackle. And uh, T.J. Weist, who is calling the plays today, Bajaki and uh, Mike Bajaki and the offensive coordinator has gone on to Tennessee but Weist had told us that he wants to get Abernathy involved as much as he possibly can. He is so quick. The other guy they want to get involved has the ball right now. George Wynn who was the backup a year ago to the outstanding Isaiah P. They really didn't know what they had only gained a couple of hundred yards in reserve as it turns out. He put up almost identical numbers to Isaiah Pede, who was the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. And when really took advantage last year in the Liberty Bowl, he was always seen as kind of the big power back to Pede's speed, elusive back. But he had a 69-yard touchdown run in that game. The coach thought, well, wait a minute. He might have a gear we don't know about. And sure enough, came into camp in great condition and has had a spectacular senior season. What do they do on third and three? Duke trying to apply pressure win on the screen and he's going to be stopped short the Duke defense which has given up forty nine and a half points a game in its last four comes out and gives the offense the ball back after a three and out well defended by Duke they were in a straight zone coverage they don't blitz a lot and that's a down where you typically may bring a blitz but because they're in that zone defense everybody reacted well to the screen it took a little longer I think than Cincinnati wanted to get the ball over to win but that was a nice win for Duke defensively Pat O'Donnell who averages 42 yards and kick punting to Connor Vernon just got it out of there end over end and he'll lose some yards as the ball goes out of bounds it's marked up near the 40 excellent field position for Duke when we come back after a punt of 25. Duncan goes in motion Renfrey flanker screen complete to Crowder Crowder with running room and it's another first down for the Blue Devils as we go back to Janine. Well as you said uh, Mike they got a five hundred dollar Belk Bowl gift card and they could shop for their own gifts and rather than picking out something for himself or his family Desmond Scott bought clothes and toys for underprivileged kids in Durham. I'd say that is a positive role model. Way to go Desmond hats off to you. First down Blue Devils. Duncan trying to get outside shakes a tackle power running. This kid is 5'10", 200 pounds, and he was just running over people. This is the, this is just not the team that you saw on film all season long. This looks this is honestly this is the down down around sweep of the Green Bay Packers. Yes, We've all exactly. seen the film of you get a seal here, that's you get a seal there, <laughs> and a lane there. This is not what Cincinnati expected to see from Duke. Good hard running there at the end. They got two seals, and then Paul Horning finished it off. <laughs> Blakeney is the motion man. Draw play to Thompson. Thompson gets a kiss at the line of scrimmage. And it was the middle linebacker Greg Blair who was pleading with his defensive <laughs> teammates during that last time out with a fiery speech. And Blair a guy who is uh, petitioning we already mentioned the sixth year of eligibility for the quarterback at Cincinnati but Blair a guy who may be playing his last game but he lost most of 2011 an injury and he's applied for a six year fake to Duncan Renfrey to the end zone 
down. Some contact, no flag, incomplete. Good coverage by Drain against Connor Vernon. Yeah, Drain was on him the whole way, and the, the crowd, the Duke crowd, maybe wanted interference, but that was an uncatchable ball. But excellent coverage. Renfrey on the post, almost intercepted, and should have been. That pass was underthrown into the arms of Chris Williams. He couldn't hold it. Williams did a wonderful job. He read this the whole way. You, you teach defensive backs, if you read it, run the route. And that is exactly what Chris Williams did. He knew that Desmond Scott, a converted running back, and that's key, Scott takes a few more steps to break into his route than a normal receiver. Scott changed positions earlier in the year, and that was a great read by Williams. Martin will try from 33 yards out. He's 18 of 20 this year. He's had a brilliant freshman season. And Duke increases its lead to 9-0. The Blue Devils have had it twice. They have scored twice here against Cincinnati. Abernathy will take a knee. This is up for grabs and knocked away. The best defensive back on the field for Duke is Cockrell. It was intended for Tompkins, and Cockrell was there stride for stride. Now, maybe if Kay got it out there a little further, his guy's got a chance. I don't know. Cockrell was on, in the, on inside the shoes of the receiver. That's called a pickpocket. When a corner is running with a guy, you want to put that hand right down where he'd carry his wallet like you're going to pick his pocket, wait for the time. You cannot play that any better. I'm not sure any ball could have been completed, and I'm not sure Cockrell would have interfered in any case. Good body control, great position. Okay, here comes pressure. Throws underneath, caught by Kelsey, and then knocked back toward the line of scrimmage. What a defense by the Blue Devils. Unbelievable that 38 Jordan Bias is still in the game and he is the guy who once again leads with his helmet on this hit. I, I, and he's I am absolutely shocked that Bias was in this game oh. and it's the exact same before and you see him go down in a pile. I, I, I'm blown away that Bias was in the ball game after two plays ago having this exact same thing happen and he came up punch drunk from that hit. I'm shocked. Kelsey may think it's personal. It's happened to him twice. Blocked. Touchdown. The Duke Blue Devils get Tony Foster in the end zone with the recovery. Holy cow. Foster blocks it and then gets it. Nothing punch drunk about that one. Well, on the last punt, Tony Foster was a half a step away from a lock. So what do you do? You call the same rush, and this time, tell him, get that half step this time That's and see great. what happens. Get there faster. And <laughs> he did. Martin for the point after. And it's 16 nothing. Duke. If you saw this coming, raise your hand. <laughs> right on the outside there, Foster, exactly where he was lined up before. A strong rush in the middle, so the big bodies that are the personal protectors for the punter can't fan out because there was four bodies coming in the middle, and Foster comes free again. One of the problems with a smaller coaching staff is that on most teams, you share duties on special teams. There are guys, there aren't enough guys to share stuff. Ralph David Abernathy, the fourth, will bring it out. Flying across the 20, belted down at the 24. We check in with Janine Edwards. Well, guys, just as you were discussing about the lack of coaches for Cincinnati, I mean, they have got students and they've got managers out here trying to coach up these players. The players are trying to coach each other. The defense, especially, they're telling themselves to settle down, guys. We've got a tackle. Duke's getting a little too comfortable back there. And then Steve Stripling came over at one point and said, guys, you've got to stay positive. We will wear them down. But the managers are having to relay comments from the coaches 
touches up in the box. I mean, it's obvious that they're having a few issues right now mm. with the lack of staff. Well, it happens every time this time of year where you see bowl teams where they're not sure their coach is, and this is that personified. Win. Gang tackled. C.J. France, number 54, led the charge. And you can tell, I mean, this Duke defense, these guys are not the most athletic players you're ever going to see in college football. But you know how hard they have studied during the interim between their last game and this ball game. They are in the right place at the right time. To, to explain how important a bowl game is, it's the same as having another spring practice. It's 15 or more practices to get ready for a bowl game. So it's almost like you go through an entire spring drills before the game. Win on the draw. Breaks a tackle, first down win. He is so powerful. Down to the 30-yard line. And, and that run and the run by Brendan Kay, I think, may start to energize this Cincinnati team a minute ago. Uh, Absolutely. A moment ago, Kay took off and lowered his shoulder and picked up the first down. And then Wynn does what he's been doing all year, which is if you're going to try to arm tackle me, it's just not going to happen. The one downside for the Blue Devil defense all year long, the ability to tackle in space. Win again. Going to get a huge dose of 32. That's good pursuit that time. And this is the type of run Janine was saying about Coach Stripling saying, we're going to wear them down. This is the type of run that if you're Cincinnati, you've just got to go back to the well. It's just a zone blocking outside stretch. You make the defense run. You only pick up about three yards, but that's going to become four. It's going to become five. It's going to become eight by the end of the game. Second in the conference this year is win averaging over 100 yards a ball game. Third and seven for K. Abernathy is his running back number one. Duke showing man to man coverage and showing blitz and here they come. K unloads under thrown great coverage by Ross Cockrell. And Cockrell a guy who and, and I do believe if you're Cincinnati you got to seriously consider going for it. It doesn't look like they're going to. I think if you get something there but Cockrell a guy boy it's just nice coverage. He's, he's one on one. No wasted steps, had great inside position. This is a guy who really struggled his freshman year out there on the island, and he's done nothing but work his way into a really solid college cornerback. Tony Miliano's had a good year. And here's some confusion. Here's some confusion on the special teams again, yeah. just getting in the right personnel. Not, not surprising. Such a tough deal when you have a coaching change. Miliano will try from 45 to get Cincinnati on the board. Plenty of distance and down the middle. Cincinnati puts up three. They're down 13. 16 3. If you're just joining us, Duke has stunned the Bearcats of Cincinnati early here in the Belt Bowl in Charlotte. Crowder and Karan Wune are deep. And Crowder will let it hit. He'll take it to 25. Renfrey, they get it out in a hurry to Scott. And Desmond Scott will pick up four or five. That's really an extension of the running game, being able to put Scott, the former running back, out there in a flanker spot. Of course, they. Scott had to move when Blair Holiday, who was a receiver coming into the season, was in a horrific jet skiing accident and wasn't able to play this season. Obviously, his career actually may be over, but they had to take Scott from running back to put a receiver. Nice change. Now back to the other side. Vernon, another flanker screen with the other wide receivers out in front, throwing blocks. Now pick up about 10. And Duncan out of the backfield threw a good block to spring the ACC's all time leading receiver and yardage receiver as well. And this is as Duke now going fast is like a run for them. They get the ball out on the edge on what is called a tunnel screen as the receiver runs down a tunnel. Sneed will try to add to it and will. Sneed has another first down, picks up 12 at 72 yards rushing. In the first quarter, they only average 119 a game. And there are gigantic 
hold so far. I, I just don't think Cincinnati had any clue that they were going to see this much run. And, you know, frankly, I'm not so, so sure Duke knew they were going to call it, but if you're going to get this much success, you might as well keep dialing it up. It's all Blue Devils here at the Belt Bowl in Charlotte against the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And it's not going to end seven to six. No, it's not. Blakeney to about the 33. Well, if you were around in 1961, you didn't have to have a whole lot of money to buy a gallon of gas or a loaf of bread. A first class stamp was only four cents, and a gallon of milk. 49 cents and it's obvious that David Cutcliffe and his staff have changed the culture here so it was neat to see Duke fans were at their hotel gathering before bowl game dumps it off to Snead makes one man miss makes another man miss and dives forward to about the 12 yard line great effort by Josh Snead the 5'9 sophomore Tough job catching the snap by Renfrey. Nothing there, and they pick up some positive yardage. And now, remember, they threw that that post pattern earlier that was intercepted. You got two receivers to the, to the top, including Vernon, back in the game. I wouldn't be surprised if they're looking something to the top here in the pass game. Third and long. Over the middle. Touchdown! Jordan they're going to say the ball came out and Cincinnati has it at the one Jalei Duncan looked like he had a touchdown but Greg Blair was there to take it away holy cow what a play that was look at the market an inch away from the goal line unbelievable Great read by Renfrey. He was looking to his left. Nothing was there. And there's, you know, I, I said it before about the helmet to helmet contact, but I think that again is you can see Blair with the helmet to helmet, and that's where the ball comes out, was because of that contact. It's a difficult call to make, but that could have been just like we were saying on a Duke defender, that could have been a penalty on Blair as well. You know, I think going forward, they're really going to have to make this a little clearer. Any I agree. Above the shoulder is going to have to be a foul, or we're going to be questioning every, virtually every tackle. And, and it, it is impossible for a defender going in like that. It's just the natural thing. But you can see the impact on the play right there, and you can see the helmet, and that's what causes the fumble. It was not a hit on the ball that caused the fumble. It was a helmet to helmet hit and as Duncan's head was knocked to the right the ball came out and a big run for win he gets it out from the shadow of the goal line to near the 10 win again quarterback out in front throwing a block and win driven out of bounds. Brendan Kay had a step on the running back and he said what the heck? Let's just go out here and go hunt somebody. Well it's Kay who got the spark started with the run on the last drive. So it's almost like this guy is saying look I, I came to play. He's got to fix his pads quickly before he goes out the block. Always smart to do. Pretty good job. Kept his feet. That's all you asked for. Think of this turnaround. It could be easily 23 to 3 right now. You've got to think this is a huge possession. For Cincinnati, especially after getting the ball back. And Tompkins dives to make the catch at the 36. That ball was thrown to the open space, and Tompkins <laughs> ran under it. Boy, that's nice adjustment to the ball and got his hands underneath. But give Cincinnati's defense credit because if, if Duke picks that up and goes down and scores. This thing could have gotten out of hand. Win on the read option to the 30. Kelsey, the tight end, gave him a good block. Kelsey has not been much of a factor in the passing game, and he is their leading receiver with 40 catches coming in. 
cut a couple of shorts, uh, short ones and was tattooed by bias both times. And he is a sensational blocker. Good hands. Good ball skills. He, this is a guy senior who's going to play at the next level. And you see him move around. He's he's a, he now lined up as a slot receiver. Talented guy. Brother Jason with the Eagles. He was recruited as a quarterback. They switched him to tight end. That's the way he's going to make his living. There's a win fighting for extra yards and may have the first down. Well, and that was a case of Cincinnati and offensive coordinator T.J. Weiss trying to get the edge on Duke. They brought Kelsey in motion. They already had a tight end to that side. K after the pump fake. Now being chased. Got a block. Has it tipped up in the air and incomplete. Duke applying really good pressure on Brendan Kay. Win with a peel back block to keep him alive for a while. And, and as tough as Duke has had it in their secondary, especially in those last four ball games, that was a coverage. The entire, there was not a blitz. Candy came up late because the quarterback had nowhere to go. But that was just solid coverage all the way across the board. Well, Duke is a defense 103 in the country against the run, 96 against the pass, and total defense are 104. But they're playing out of their mind tonight. Second and 10 for Cincinnati. K with time to the end zone. Touchdown! A perfect strike to Anthony McClung. The slot receiver with his second scoring catch of the year. Nice throw by Brendan Kay. And he saw exactly what he wanted on that one where he had one on one coverage against Young Weissman. The nickelback lined up over on the slot. He saw the one on one and knew he had it beat. And that was it was also thrown perfectly on time. Yes. Right when McClung made his move that ball was in the air. Miliano for the point after. And Cincinnati, after spotting Duke a big lead, has closed the gap to six points on the Brendan K touchdown pass. Need wrapped up only got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, you've got to think Cincinnati's going to get a little energy with what their offense just did. This, this is they came out, they started getting punched around a little bit. We've seen some communication issues, which we expected from the start with the pared down staff. But you've got to figure they're getting settled in a little bit now that they've made a few things happen. Renfrey wants to throw, goes underneath, and got it to his backup quarterback, Brandon Kinnett. That's Kinnett's third catch. So the previous line of scrimmage has been the 26. The penalty marked back half the mm -hmm. distance to the goal of the 13. And but now it's fourth and 17. So we have done the housekeeper. <laughs> well, and you see the defensive line coach, interim head coach, Steve Stripling, the intensity level has turned up here for Cincinnati and all of a sudden the momentum that was so clearly on Duke's side I think is completely flipped over to Cincinnati's side. Will Monday the first team all ACC punter crushes one. What a oh my holy mackerel oh my that ball did not go out of bounds what a punt. Well, I'll bet that's I'll bet that's a belt bowl record. It only went 79 yards. And it tightrope walked down the sideline. It, it caught an edge and somehow didn't go out of bounds. What a punt. Watch this ball as it starts to roll and doesn't go out of bounds. Oh, that's so close. We might have another review. Still a great punt, even if it did. Yes, it was. Cincinnati will take over there 228 to go in the half. K 
Kay wants to throw out of the end zone. Incomplete pass to diving Kembrell Tompkins. Watch we, this replay. <laughs> we watched this about a dozen times during the break. And I think that the field judge, Greg Thomas, got this right. I didn't see the ball touch the white, but watch the finish here. Isaac Blakeney right there puts his left hand on the ball and stops the ball from moving. What a great hustle play. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, wait, he was in the end zone. It should be a touchback. No, in college football, it's only where the ball is. Yep. So that was an excellent job by Blakeney to finish that play. What a punt. You throw again or to try to get some punting room. Win. Swallowed up by that Blue Devil defense at the three, led by the charge of Justin Fox out of Charlotte. And this is such a huge game for Duke, a prime recruiting area for them. They've got a lot of players already from Charlotte, and this would be a coup. And you can win this. And a game where the momentum had switched back to Cincinnati, that punt puts it back to Duke's side. And with a minute 55 and two timeouts, Cincinnati. I think they've got to think about throwing the ball here even from their own end zone because you give this ball back to Duke they've got two timeouts and some momentum, some momentum you may be looking at a two score deficit going into halftime. K from his end zone. Going to have to run and K first down and more. What a great play by K. It was all coverage. He had good time. Uh, th this happens because of the pass protection by the offensive line. No blitz this time by Duke. They play coverage. The defensive line gets out of their rush lanes, and because it took a long time for that play to develop, all the Duke defensive backs have turned and run. Big, big play for Cincinnati to not have to turn that ball over with this much time and two timeouts left for Duke. And no timeouts for Cincinnati. So first downs and getting out of bounds will be key on this drive. Delayed blitz. K throws to the outside. Tompkins couldn't hold it. Good defense by Tony Foster. And this is exactly what you're going to have to throw if you're Cincinnati without any timeouts. You're going to have to throw over to the side. That is nice coverage right there. And, and it, Tompkins wanted pass interference, but... You're, you're going to let guys go with the hands a little bit, especially if both guys are doing it. So that was just good hard coverage. Ken Brown Tompkins, big time receiver coming out of high school, signed with Tennessee, but then when there was a coaching change, he wanted out of his scholarship. They wouldn't let him. He ended up going to El Camino Community College and then to Cincinnati. He has great skill, and Foster was all over him. K again, floats it. Wide open, caught at the 40 yard line. Anthony McClung got loose in the secondary for 31 yards. Well, McClung crossed the entire field, and the safety on that side for Duke was late getting over there. Excuse me, that's the cornerback, Ross Cockrell, who came over out of control. Cockrell was trying to rotate to the deep coverage, and because he ran over a little bit out of control, McClung once again able to run by him. McClung looks like he's got a good feel of how to run routes. Nobody has given up bigger plays and more of them than Duke this year. Caught at the one, touchdown! Ralph David Abernathy beat Kyler Brown. The grandson of the legendary civil rights leader racing down the sideline found the ball and made the adjustment. Partially blocked and it got through. What a turnaround. As much as Duke has dominated this first half, Cincinnati has just taken the lead. This is exactly 
if you're going to have a little back in the backfield that's going to run routes, this is exactly what you want. And I give Kyler Brown all the credit in the world. He saw Abernathy coming into the backfield, and he turned and sprinted as fast as he could towards the end zone. But unfortunately, there's no linebacker in the country in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the speed of Abernathy that they're going to be able to run with him. Boy, what a ball game. We've had a little bit of everything <laughs> in this thing. Both teams used the same tunnel. Cincinnati's supposed to go off first. They did. Here's Duke David Cutcliffe with Janine. Coach, quite a turn of events there. You, you're not happy right now. What, what's going through your mind? Well, I'm not very pleased. That's the way you ice a kicker without a timeout, sending a player on late. So I'm bothered by that, that we have a field goal good. And that should be unsportsmanlike, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. Other than that, I'm really not pleased that we can't make a fourth and a half yard at a very critical time of the game and that we turn the ball over going in. Uh, we're going to correct some of those things and come back out and play better football. And if we and also get somebody pinned back inside their one yard line, play a little better defense. Well, you really fired your guys up with your pregame speech. They came out on a mission. How do you recapture that and get them to start the second half the same way? Well, I'm going to go get their attention right now, and we're going to come back out and play well the second half. Thanks, Coach. At the half, it's 17-16. Now we send you to Reese Davis with the Reese's Halftime Report. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Patrick, Ed Cunningham, Janine Edwards working the sidelines for us. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Mike and Ed, I caught up with Cincinnati head coach, interim head coach Steve Stripling, and he told me, you know what? The fact that we are dealing with a half of a coaching staff really showed up in that first half. He said, we don't have 10 decision makers, 10 sets of eyes. We only have five. And he said, and it was evident, especially with the issues that we had on special teams. Now, he said, we have got to improve our focus for the next 30 minutes. We haven't played very well. We haven't focused very well. And especially, he said, on his side of the ball, defense, they have missed so many tackles. He said, we have got to get that cleaned up. But he is pleased with the play of his quarterback. He said he's shown a lot of patience. Guys. Janine, that's what we speculated about. Usually uh, a lot of teams have special teams by committee. We're down to four full-time mm -hmm. coaches. You can't even form a committee. That was Ralph David Abernathy on the return. Well, one of the things that Cincinnati tries to do to get their run game going, they offset win behind the quarterback. So it's more like an eye formation that they run. And then the offensive line, it's just straight zone blocking. This is a power run team. And if you were in the I formation, you'd have a fullback. But because you're in the spread, instead, you bring Travis Kelsey across the formation. But here's the thing that George Wynn does, as well as anybody in the country, no wasted steps. If there is a scene, take it and go. When you study this guy on film, he does not mess around. If there's a hole, he's going to take it. And I think that's what Cincinnati needs to get back to here in the second half. And Kelsey is a blocker, is a load, 260 pounds, and win will power forward for about eight yards. The senior out of Southfield, Michigan, averaged over 100 yards a game this year. He only had, uh, he's now over 1,000 yards more than he had last year. He had yeah. just over 200 yards. Of course, Isaiah Pede was the Big East Offensive Player of the Year at running back for Cincinnati. But you see Kelsey that time comes into the middle and basically becomes a fullback. Kelsey plays that tight end H-back, comes the lead. Win again, taken down in the backfield. Walt Canty, the safety, shot the gap and got him in the backfield. That's a huge play for Duke. And defensive coordinator Jim Knowles is taking chances when he can and making most of them pay off. And, and this is a bust by Cincinnati. There's just no way that McClung the receiver is going to get in there. Candy was lined up all the way to the inside. If anything, the quarterback needed to bring McClung closer to the line of scrimmage if that's the guy he's going to block. The alignment for Candy was perfect, and McClung couldn't get there. They back out of it and bring three. Now a late fourth. K takes off again. He has the first down and gets out of bounds. Well, and you can see right there at the end of the play, that's Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, showing frustration. Because at this point, you've seen that the only way we're going to get beat is Brandon Kane. I think who he's mad at, honestly, is number 45, Austin Gamble. Gamble's the linebacker who they they left back as kind of a spy, and he ran up and got caught in the wash. And I think that's what Jim Knowles was upset about. We have a spy. You've got to be the spy. That's a huge play. It moves the sticks and another set of downs. 
for Cincinnati. And, and, and that spy is needed because it really, Brandon Kay has been the reason He's that Cincinnati's him. gotten this back in this game is with his ability to run on pass downs. He has really hurt him. Quick out to McClung, shakes a tackle. McClung across midfield, still on his feet. 30, 20, 15, 10. Duke's inability to tackle in open space has hurt them all year long. And Brendan Kay got up very slowly. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 84 defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's Kenny Onanicki. First and goal at the five yard line. And there's the missed tackle by Canty. He just overran it, and you made that point. When you make those missed tackles, nice job by number 15, Chris Moore, blocking down the field. But there's Anna Nicky with the hit, the personal the foul hit. hit, yeah, on the quarterback to add to the play. Penalty puts it at the five, first and goal. Win. Down near the goal line. Shift the strength of the formation to the near side on third and goal. K to throw, takes off, has room, caught from behind. A saving tackle by Anthony Young Weissman. Without that grab, K waltzes into the end zone. And this will force a field goal try. Well, the blitz came. Jim Knowles dialed up another blitz. It was picked up pretty well, but that was great recovery by young Weissman. <laughs> and Boy. literally a shoestring tackle. Yes, it was. Miliano's already been good from 45. This will be from 27. High snap, they get it down, and Miliano knocks it through. So Duke stands tall inside the five. The penalty was a killer there. And, uh, during the break, Brennan Kay was getting some attention to his lower right back. They had a heat pad on that right hip. Of course, he was got a personal foul on the last one. His leg got caught up when the defender went over it. He was slow to get up. So wouldn't be surprised if that's the area they've been looking at. Is, that was potentially injured on that hit. Well, they have a veteran quarterback. Ready to go and Munchy Lego started the first eight. And they'll let this one hit and take over from the 25. Both Thompson and Sneed are in there right now. They fake it to him and throw to Thompson. Thompson across the 35 to about the 38 yard line for a first down. Bomar with another tackle. He's been very active tonight. I've been impressed with all of the running backs from Duke and their acceleration after catching the ball. They, they all have good speed, but they, they seem to have a good feel, and not shockingly, in this offense. They seem to have a really good feel for the passing game. Renfrey fakes the screen, throws deep, intercepted. Picked off by Chenault. Chenault back to the 35, and there's a player down as well. A 22 yard interception return. And Cincinnati does the job on defense. As well, they pick off Renfrey. And Renfrey just makes a bad throw. The safety, Chenault, never, ever turned and run. Ran, he was in perfect position. Cincinnati takes over after the interception. They'll start at the 40, and Kay is in there. They're going to run a reverse to McClung. McClung with room to run, knocked out of bounds. And we want to welcome in the new yet-to-take-over head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats, Tommy Tuberville. Good to see you again, Tommy. Good, good to see you, Mike. And I'm enjoying this game. <laughs> I'm, I'm not up here very often. I'd rather be on the sideline, but what a heck of a game this is. There have been so many stories about your departure from Texas Tech, so why don't you tell us exactly what happened, how you got from there to here? Well, there's there's no easy way to leave. And, uh, right. of, of course, and I left in a matter of eight or nine hour period. I, I had no thoughts of leaving Texas Tech it's a great place great people but you know this just seemed right fit you know for some reason and my wife's from this area so we're looking forward to it you know coaches as this play turns into a big one for Cincinnati there goes win 
touchdown. Well, you're good luck for the Bearcats, well, aren't I'm you? I'm telling you, I, I need to stay up here. 46 yards for Wynn, who is having a huge game after a slow start. And you by know, the way, he's a senior. Yeah, you know, and that's, <laughs> I tell everybody that, you know, bowl games, whoever can run the football is usually going to win. And, and, and Duke's thrown the ball pretty well, but they haven't hadn't had the opportunity to run as much as, as Cincinnati tonight. And uh, But it's been a good ball game. I, I've enjoyed watching it. The Cincinnati program has lost three really good coaches in the last 10 years. It is it is a real juxtaposition to get somebody of of your character and your record to come to Cincinnati. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And again, you never know a situation you, you hate to leave. And I've got a team to play in tomorrow night, uh, Texas Tech. They're playing on ESPN tomorrow night. What about 8:30 down in Houston? My son plays on the team, Tucker. And and uh, man, I you know I just I, I, I hated it. You know I, I hated breaking the news to the kids. But you know and. And it's it's a business, and uh, you know I I felt like in my career at my age coming to Cincinnati was a great opportunity, and and uh, so I jumped on it, and uh, hopefully it was it was the right thing to do. You know, Coach, there's so much going on with conferences around the country. Right. And and I was in Bristol when the news broke that you were, and the use the word I used was confusing because let's be honest, they're in the Big 12, Cincinnati, yeah. not sure where they're going to go. Most people watching this game are saying, why would a guy leave? A place in the Big 12 to go to Cincinnati, where there is an uncertain future in some regard. You know, it's it's uncertain in all of college football. Heck, I, you know, the Big 12 the last three years, we didn't know at Texas Tech where we were going to be. Unfortunately, we landed in a great situation. That's going to be a great conference, and, and Tech's going to be you know, is is in a good spot. But you know, the thing about Cincinnati is, you know, one of they're only one of four teams. This one look like they're going to win 10 games four years in a row. Cincinnati's going to end up somewhere. And uh, it's going to be in a, in a good situation, but I didn't go there for that. I, I, I came because of the situation, the the people, the opportunity to win games. You know, I'm over that 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 point of hey, you know, winning all the the, the big games and being on television. But it, I tell you, Cincinnati's got a great program. I'm looking forward to being part of it. Scott on the return, and he'll be swallowed up inside the 15-yard line. There has been a commitment on the part of the university to improve Nippert Stadium, which is right. one of the oldest facilities in, in college football, and to build luxury boxes, which would be a huge step for the program. Right, right. And, and we, we have to do that. You know, Quit Babcock, our athletic director, our president, Ono, you know, there were two guys that very adamant that, you know, in two years there's going to be major changes and we're going to have to be somewhere, whether it's the Big East or somewhere else, depending on what happens. But you have to show the people that make the decisions that you're making those decisions to move forward in your program and to make it better. And, and we've done that with the stadium. We've got a great basketball program and yes, Nick Cronin's do. done a great job. So, so uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited about the future and and uh, looking forward to a challenge. They're all challenges. Uh, this is just a little <laughs> different challenge than, than the one I had at Texas Tech and Auburn and, and Ole Miss. Tommy, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Good to we see you. Wish you all the best. At Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. You too. Yes, sir. You it, too. Thank Coach, you. thank Happy you very much. Thank and, you. and I thank said you. it was it was surprising we took the job, but I think you're right. I think Cincinnati and Texas Tech, both schools came out on top here. What a great hire to bring thank you, you in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And good luck, Red Raiders tomorrow night. I want to say that. <laughs> okay. I'm pulling for them. All right. Tommy, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. It's rare when you have a coaching change where you really can say that both schools got what they, you know, got something out of the deal that's going to work. Out I, to, for Cincinnati to be able to get Coach Tuberville, and, and honestly, it was shocking that you, you, people around the country, to, to do that was a major, major coup for this university. Well, you're so used to... Renfrey in the pistol. Good protection. Floats it over the middle and caught inside the 15 by Scott. Somehow that ball got inside of three defenders and Scott never broke stride and gains 39 yards. And Drew Fry, the senior who comes up a little gimpy from the play, was in perfect position but just slightly misplayed this ball. Fry is there and you could see the stumble as Fry was coming out of his break from the safety spot where he missed it. Sneed to the 10. What a throw by Renfrey. And, and what, you know, every play we've seen tonight, that's what's been fun about this game. 
it's not only good plays, but guys are in position. You cannot fault Drew Fry. He was in position. He had one step that stuck in the ground funny. But if he doesn't stumble, he makes a play on that ball, and it's yeah. most likely incomplete. This will be the 11th play of this drive. Fake the draw. Renfrey for the end zone. Touchdown. The catch by Connor Vernon. And these two players. How many times have they done that? Yeah, these two players have to be careful of They're turning and starting to chatter to the defense. They're going to be looking at a personal foul here if they're not careful. Yeah, you don't want to be woofing. No. And I'm surprised they didn't call that. Yeah, Desmond Scott did it after his long catch, and that time it was Connor Vernon. Well, maybe after all these years of no success, <laughs> maybe you, maybe you give them a long leash. Yeah, and now down five, you go for two. I, uh, you know, I always think you go for two in the fourth quarter. I, I, I always think you're going to chase this if you don't make it because you it's it's under 50 percent that you convert these two point conversions. I get it. You're on the number where you go for two, but I always think you wait on. Two. I like it because it tells you where you are one way or another. But we'll see how it plays out there. <laughs> Under center this time is Renford. Rolls right, nobody there. Throw back wide open, two points. Blakeney. How do you like it now? Well, and it's always <laughs> great when it works, right? But Duke responds. Wonderful play call. They left a receiver, Blakeney. Open on the two point conversion, but it was the senior all time ACC leader and receivers, Connor Vernon, who had the touchdown. Players from both teams had the chance to visit the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which is just up the street here in Charlotte from the Bank of America Stadium, which is the home of the Carolina Panthers. And Duke's right back in it at 27 24. Now it comes down to can Duke's defense start to hang in there a little bit? They've been giving up some big chunk yardage here in the second half. Because this game's starting to feel like it might go back and forth. Abernathy cut down at the 20. Kay, who was shaken up earlier and had some treatment on his back after he was tripped up near the goal line. That looked like motion early, no flag. And now win on a little screen they set up in a terrific tackle by David Helton who got out to the sideline to get that dangerous running back. And now Sean Renfrey has to stand around and hope that his defense can get a stop or a turnover which they haven't really been able to do here in the second half. And now it's starting to get a little cold out so some of your receivers and running backs should probably stay if Cincinnati's going to go on some long drives you got to keep the lather. Another huge third down here. A quarterback draw would be something I'd think about the way Kay's been running. Will Jim Knowles try another blitz? That's Abernathy in motion. And it is a quarterback draw. And Duke stayed home and stopped it. I, I'm not so sure that this snap was not supposed to go to Abernathy. Abernathy. Yeah. Uh, it looked to me like they were going to try to do a direct snap, and you can see Kay right there kind of throw his hand down. Watch Abernathy right here. That's why yeah. he stopped. Yeah, he, he was, was waiting for the yeah. ball. And, and that's supposed to be a sweep to the outside, and Kay, and then Kay gets it, and I think he was a little confused because there may have been some running room there, but that looked like potentially a mistake by Dan Sprague not snapping a little earlier. Yeah, that was another what do I do now. Yeah. Crowder is back. Big bounce picks it up like Ozzie Smith on the hop runs into his own man flag is down and so is Crowder at the 45 and Connor Vernon just showed you the speed that most people didn't think he had here he's not going to be able to get away and he's down to the 37 yard line tackled again by Bomar Connor Vernon who has caught more passes for more yards than any other ACC receiver ever six tonight to say the least the belt bowl has been a very entertaining game Cincinnati leading Duke 27 to 24 as we start quarter number four from Charlotte Duke facing second and long from the Cincinnati 37 yard line
Renfrey against the blitz. Got his backup quarterback, Brandon Kanet, and Brandon Kanet makes another catch and has a first down. That's four for him. They've used him as a tight end, a wide receiver, a Wildcat quarterback, very versatile athlete. Big guy, 6'2", 225 pounds. You can see right there, very natural catcher of the ball. So if he can do some things in space, why not get him out there a little more often to get some ball practice, start putting in a few more wrinkles potentially. Renfrey gives it off to Thompson, trying to turn the corner, does, and gets inside the five. I get back to what we said in the, in the first half. Duke's ability to run the football at times tonight has just been huge, and that's something they haven't shown all year long. And they had it in the first quarter, and it looks like they're going to have it here in the fourth quarter. They got a stop on defense in a game that started to feel like a possession game, and they were behind because Cincinnati was up. Duke gets a defensive stop, and now Cincinnati Cincinnati not able to slow them down. If you were going to have Kinnett in, you've got to throw out of this. This is where you've got to throw it. And Kinnett, a guy, he, he can throw it. You, you may not get as much productivity as you would with Redfrey, but I think this would be a, a situation where he may try. He's only thrown the ball 12 times all year, four complete. Five complete touchdown, David Reeves. Well, it's not going to get much easier than that, is it? And it's a great call because Cincinnati has to sell out on the road. You have to. You absolutely have to. And the way Duke has been able to run the ball, and then they bring in Kinnett, who is their running quarterback, and they bring their tight end, David Reeves, in motion and slip him out, and it's very easy. Great call by the Duke offensive staff and, and you can't blame Cincinnati because you're no. absolutely right. They're, Just virtually yeah. impossible to cover. Duke regains the lead. The Blue Devils are up by four after Ross Martin's point after. He almost threw that ball too low. Abernathy with a running start at the nine. This kid is extremely quick. Then he gets drilled as he got to the 24-yard line by Dion Williams. Jamison Crowder's had quite a game tonight, and this follows a horrible accident that he was involved in this summer on a jet ski with another wide receiver, Blair Holiday. Holiday needed CPR from a nursing student to save his life at the scene. He had to be driven to a local hospital, then flown to another, had a traumatic brain injury, was non-responsive, and was not expected to live at the time. Somehow he pulled through, and the young man wants to go back to class in January, and eventually he wants to play football again. But if you're Crowder, you carry all that guilt with you, and it was just a horrific thing that happened to him. Cincinnati comes back in a big play down to the Duke 40. And Kelsey finally making an impact in the passing game for 35 yards. Can you imagine having that? Yeah. Even though it wasn't your fault, it was nobody's fault, it was just an accident. But to have a teammate lay dying near you, or what appeared to be, and then have to come back and focus. And Holiday has made a miraculous recovery. Hasn't he ever? Ball's bobbled. Now they'll run the flanker reverse, and it looks like they want to run a pass off of it. And instead, they won't get anything out of it. And Janine has more. Well, guys, I spoke to Blair Holiday before this game, and interestingly, he told me that he's still great friends with Jamison Crowder, and they talk all the time, but not once have they talked about that accident. Blair said, I just didn't feel like I needed to talk about it. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't talk or walk for a month after that accident. He lost 40 pounds during his recovery. He doesn't know if he'll ever play football again, but he said the worst part for him was seeing how his injury impacted his family. His mom had to move here from California to take care of him. Janine, that kind of a thing is something awful for people to go through. Big break for the Bearcats. Let's see if they can convert. Ray to the end zone. Did he hold it? He did. Touchdown. Chris Moore. Only his fourth catch all year. 
and it's a touchdown to put his team back in front in the ball game. Boy, Kay has made some yes, great he has. throws. Tony Foster was right there, but I don't think he ever saw the ball. If I'm Tommy Tuberville, I'm awfully glad that Kay's got a six-year yes, eligibility. Sir. Lost it more than two years to injury. That's the, the watermark if you get a six-year. But if I were Tommy Tuberville, the new coach for Cincinnati, I'd be smiling right now. So I think that's one position he does not have to worry about next year. 77 yards in a minute and 26. Well, this game has been just about as much fun as we could have possibly hoped for. Back and forth and back and forth. Cincinnati now up 34 31, 11 19 to go in the game. Scott a yard deep. Stop shy of the 20. Renfrey. Another short set and gets it out to his favorite target, Connor Furman. That's eight catches for the senior from Miami, who was only 5'8", 165 as a 16-year-old, was not recruited virtually at all. If you're 5'8", 165, nobody wants to sign you to a D1 scholarship. But he had his growth spurt before his senior year, and then people started coming around. Second and two, Duncan stays in the ball game. Blakeney in motion. Duncan again picking his way, and he's got the first down up at the 46 yard line. And of course, Duncan was after that hit by Blair, which was helmet to helmet that caused the fumble, was taken out and uh, had to be checked out during halftime. So obviously, passed all the tests to come back in. Blitz coming. Renfrey floats it. Incomplete intended for Crawford. There was some contact with Drain. But Crawford did not complain after the play, or Crowder. Normally you'll see a guy throw yeah. his arms. I, I, I don't think that that was interference, but I, I, I am a little surprised. Most receivers look like they're theatrical majors. Yeah, that's right. If somebody's within five yards, yeah. they're complaining, and that was perfect coverage. Fake the blitz again. Now Sneed on the draw. And Sneed will get to the 35. It'll bring up third to about four and a half. Good tackle by Chris Williams. And now this game, this game's literally going to come down to who has it last. Because I think I think these defenses, you know, with when you start having two, three, four, five, and when you get to the national championship game that much time off, it is hard to be as conditioned as you are during the season. And I think these defenses are starting to get pretty worn out. Could be four down territory here. Blitz coming. Renfrey unloads. Incomplete. From here, it would be a 52 53 yard field goal attempt. Dominique Battle caught up to that, and that pass was thrown late. It, it was late, and he floated it as well yeah. because Blakeney gets away with a little bit of a push off there. Great recovery by Battle. But this ball was thrown a little bit late and a little bit soft. But now, it looks like they're going to let the freshman try the long one. Well, he made a 53-yarder, made in quotes, because there was a penalty on the play, took off the board. He missed a 49-yarder. This will be from 52. And he got it. Boy, this kid is money in the bank. Charlotte is now the home of the U.S. Airways Flight 1549, better known as Miracle on the Hudson. The actual aircraft that Chesley Sullenberger landed on the Hudson River back in January of 2009, part of the exhibit at the Carolina Aviation Museum. Normally, planes that crash don't look that good. No. What a miracle that was, though. Tie ball game, 7.24 to go. Abernathy is deep, and this kick over his head. Well, you were talking about the field goals at the end of the half when Duke lined up for a 53-yarder that was good by Ross Martin. You could hear the whistles for illegal substitution against Cincinnati. They move it up five yards, and then from 49, 
Martin misses by, I don't know, a foot or two. Yeah. And then he gets another shot at 52, and you're right, this guy is money. Bounces right back from that miss at the end of the half. And that kick barely gets over it. I don't know if it, if he was 53 there, I'm not sure that would have made it, but doesn't matter. Still gets the ball Let's record for longest field goal. Nice job. Now it's up to Brendan Kay again, who has been equal to the task all night long on the keeper. Trying to get to the outside, and Duke won't let him. They'll take him down after a gain of two or three. Kay throws underneath to his big tight end, Kelsey. It's going to be a couple of yards short. Kelsey came in as not only the leading receiver in terms of catches, but in terms of yards. And it's highly unusual, and touchdowns. One of only three tight ends in the entire country that leads in all three of those categories, and yet we've only called his name a couple of times. To well, mostly he's been a blocker. And that's the thing, and that's why this guy projects so well at the next level. Not sure. only is he good catching the ball, but he is a can be a dominant blocker. And you've seen him move a lot in different positions. Third down after third down, Cincinnati has been able to convert and keep the drive alive. Now it's third and two. Win. No. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. So Cincinnati went with a strength, their running game and win against Duke's weakness, the ability to stop the run, and it blew up in their face. And there is Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, celebrating. Well, and what Jim Knowles did was he took Jamal Bruce and Justin Fox and lined them both up on the inside shoulders of the guards. So he defended what are called the A-gaps on either side of the center with two defensive tackles. It was the perfect alignment against an inside run play. Now O'Donnell to kick to Crowder, who takes it on the hop and makes the first man miss. Crowder! In the open field, taken down at the 42-yard line, and that was a saving tackle by Nick Temple. As it was, he gained 19 yards on the return after a 44-yard kick, and Duke with great field position in a tie ball game. Done in Charlotte between Cincinnati and Duke will get you out for the Bruins and the Bears. And by the way, Bearcat fans locked in on this football game. Your basketball team's up 26-22 on New Mexico. They are at halftime on ESPN2. Reese, that's important, too, for sure. Duke takes over at its own 43-yard line. 5.17 to go. This could well be Duke's last possession. Sneed. Got to the corner. Boy, how did he pick up 12 yards on that run? It looked first like he was only going to get two, then maybe five. He ends up getting 12. Well, you, you know, when we were talking to David Cutcliffe about his team, and they were talking about the improvements they've started to make on the offensive line, they know they need to make some improvement on defense, but you could tell he's very happy with the skill players that they've been recruiting here. And you're starting to see guys like Jamison and Sneed and Duncan. These are ball players. Tunnel screen. Vernon. And he is smashed after a gain of 10. Just crushed by Drew Fry. That may have been helmet to helmet as well. Nine catches, 106 yards. Let's watch right here at the end. Well, well sure it was. you know, and, and it, that, that one's hard because the face mask was actually what made the first contact. So that's not targeting because the face mask hit. He didn't duck his head. He didn't leave his feet. So that's a good no call there. Sneed again. Boy, he runs hard. Doesn't he? Yeah. And, and give and Cincinnati. Every run, this is 40 yeah. seconds of play. I know. Yeah, and Cincinnati, I think, at some point needs to start thinking about timeouts because Duke, if I'm Duke, if they're not going to call timeouts, I'm going to eat as much clock as possible. Absolutely. And, and maybe even think about if we end up with a field goal, but we eat all the clock, why not? Yeah, you, you got a field goal missed three times all, all year, year yeah. long, and the, the only one he missed in this game was by a foot from 48 yards. Play action fake. Caught for a first down by Connor Vernon. 
Again, that's a play where Cincinnati has got to be thinking run. You use the play action to get your best receiver open. Watch how fast Renf Ren or excuse me, Vernon gets out of this break. Renfrey throws this right away. He just he he's so smooth. He's so good out of his break. And Cheatham, who's one-on-one -on -one coverage, he can't let him get over the top of him, so he's got to start bailing. But that's two guys who have thrown a lot of – they've thrown and caught a lot of balls between the two of them. You wouldn't want to bet against two or three runs here, would you? <laughs> no, not at all. First and goal with a minute 49 left to go in the game. Sneed is the running back. Sneed gets the ball. And now if you're Cincinnati, you've got to start working yeah. on those timeouts. Otherwise, well, you're not going to have any time left. And that's exactly what Stripling's going to do. I was just going to say, you know, what we've been talking, of course, there's going to be a turnover in the coaching staff. Butch Jones already gone to Tennessee as the head coach. Steve Stripling will join him, but serving as interim. But because of this small staff, I was wondering, Who's their clock guy? Because every exactly. staff has a guy who knows the clock and, and can make suggestions strategy-wise, but this was a good timeout by Cincinnati. Yeah. And, and your goal, your goal if you're Duke, is obviously you want to get seven. Now you go into the the Wildcat, which they've shown they can throw, but if you could get this under a minute with a score and use the timeouts, it's a perfect scenario. Connect gives it to Sneed. The yeah. ball come out. Oh man. I haven't seen a signal yet. Cincinnati's saying they have it. No signal. And Cincinnati has the ball. Brandon Mills came in to make a hit on Sneed. The ball came loose, and for the second time, Duke has turned it over inside the 10-yard line. It looked like John Williams, number 95, made the recovery. Well, that's, that's not much of a hit by Mills, but oh. I will say this. That's two freshman running backs who have fumbled inside the 10-yard line for Duke. And, and I don't want to take anything away from Cincinnati. They've hung in this game early on. It looked like they might get run out of this building. Now they've got a chance. They've managed the clock well. Their quarterbacks played well. But for Duke, talk about missed opportunities. You fumble the ball twice inside the 10-yard line. That's tough to swallow. Uh, we could be talking about two more touchdowns, and that would have them at 48. Now, what do you do when you're Cincinnati? Ray under pressure. Makes two guys miss, fighting for extra yards. Very close for a first down for Brandon Ray. Or Brandon K, excuse me. And K has just been a monster running the ball tonight. He's been great. Yeah. And here and here's the other beauty for Cincinnati. Of course, Steve just keeps needs to keep his head up. You can't get lost here. You may end up, you never know, you may end up getting the ball back and you got to go back in. You got to stay focused. His but, teammates trying to encourage him. But for Cincinnati, what a huge break that they didn't use another timeout before that fumble. Yes. So now they have two timeouts. And with the clock stopping out of bounds and the change moving, this is a lot of time. K, a very, very dangerous pass intended for Kenbrell Tompkins. He threw that ball from near the far hash to the near side. That's a long, long way in the air. Took a long time to get there, and the ball just floated on him. You could see the receiver, Tompkins, waiting, waiting, and have to make an adjustment. Now you've got third in the yard. Well, I, I still think you throw it here because you're going to go for it in four downs because I don't think... Well, I just worry about you run it and how much clock you're going to run because you're starting to run against the clock in this field position at a minute six seconds. If they don't get it, I have to kick it out of here. Win. Well, you know, you know, you know, you'd, you'd have to go for because they because Duke can run out the clock even with two timeouts. Excuse me. I, the reason I don't think you pardon me. You kick the ball, tie ball game. But my problem there is, now you're giving the ball in the 50-yard oh, line, sure. you know? Kelsey! The big tight end with the game's biggest play, 83 yards!
Well, they waited long enough to use their biggest <laughs> weapon, didn't they? Now the problem is, did they score too soon? <laughs> Never scored. Yes, that's a fair point. <laughs> Kelsey, 6'6", 260. Did you see the speed on yeah. that young man? Yeah, you can. He is going to be playing a long yeah. time on the next level. And Kay with a perfect pass. 41 to 34. What a turnaround. Duke goes from getting the go ahead touchdown, fumbling at the five, and Cincinnati makes them pay. Longest touchdown in belt ball history. Boy, if you're the quarterback, you're just thinking, I got him, I got him, I got him. Yeah, and, and the safety had moved over to the middle of the field. Young Weissman, because there was a route going off to his left, he slid over just enough. Walt Canty, the safety who had walked over to cover, let the Kelsey go like you're supposed to in that coverage, and Kay made a wonderful read, and unfortunately for Duke, the fumble, the second fumble inside the 10 may be the one that cost him, but I still wonder 44 seconds. Yeah. You're right. You can never score too soon. Little squib kick. And Duke will have it first and 10 at the 32. Big task in front of Duke right now. Four man rush. Complete pass to Crowder at the 45. It's going to be a first down. They'll stop the clock momentarily at, and, at 32 seconds. And really smart here by David Cutcliffe. You have three timeouts, and because you need a touchdown, every second's going to count. Even though the clock stops, once the officials set the ball, it starts. and especially because it's not a long game, so it gains, so it's not going to take long, that was a really smart timeout because at 32 seconds with three timeouts, it's about extending the game as long as possible. And that, that would have cost them probably seven or eight seconds had they not used that timeout. They did a study in the NFL quite a while back that said a pass over 20 yards downfield will take about 13 seconds for everybody to get down there yep. and for you to clock it. So if you're going to hit it, to have those timeouts in your back pocket. Huge. Duke about at the point where they can get Hail Marys out of this. Renfrey hit the ball, is intercepted. Picked off by Nick Temple. And Nick Temple is going to score for Cincinnati. Malik Bomar, who has made one big play after another tonight, got the hit on Renfrey, and he really drilled him. The ball popped loose, and it's a touchdown. And Renfrey, unfortunately, never saw Bomar coming. You can see the back lined up to his left, and here's from the outside is Bomar's going to come. There is nobody to that side to pick him up because Bomar was lined up on a receiver. Renfrey had no clue he was coming. The ball pops up in the air. And fortunately for Cincinnati, falls into Nick Temple's arms. But that was a wonderful call by the Cincinnati defensive yes, staff. Yes, it was. Duke had given up 49 and a half points a game in its last four games. Right now, they have given up 48 to Cincinnati, but they played a lot better than that would indicate. That was just excellent timing by Beaumont. It looked like. If you if you looked at that a hundred times on film, it would look like number four was going to go and cover Crowder. He never moved his feet before the snap, and that's why Renfrey, a veteran quarterback, coached by one of the best quarterback coaches in the history of the game, and David Cutcliffe, Cincinnati bluffed him, and that was just wonderful call, wonderful execution by Bomar because you've got to assume a senior quarterback. Being coached by a guy like David Cutcliffe would be able to see it coming, not the way that Cincinnati ran. That was just a terrific blitz. Beautifully designed.
whip kick again. Nine seconds to go in the game. We have had 1,090 total yards in this game. It has been an offensive explosion. Yeah, and unfortunately for Sean Renfrey, he's not going to be able to take the last snap, snap for Duke. But here's a young man who's had a fine career and should, should take nothing away but pride from what he and all of his teammates and this staff and everybody at Duke has done to get this thing headed in the direction where they're going to start having some winning seasons around here in football. That is for sure. I think there's one second left on the clock. And because it was a first down, they will mark the first down and then wind the clock. And this game will be over with Cincinnati. The winner here in the Belt Bowl. Once again, the final score, 48-34 Cincinnati. Now we send you to San Diego for Baylor and UCLA in the Bridgeport Education Holiday Bowl.